welcome to the Flexitarian Feast. I'm Michelle. And I'm Eliz, and we are two home cooks trying to eat more plants. Thanks for joining us today. For this episode, we have an interview with a special guest. Yeah, we talked with Lindsay. Um, She is a vegan mom of three kids, and they are also vegan. One of them is even gluten-free. And she had some really good easy meal ideas. Yeah, so Lindsay is a friend of mine. Um internet friend turn real life friend she yeah like um, michelle said she's a homeschooling mom of three she has a seven five and two year old so she is very busy um they are all plant-based in their family and she is also a healthy living and family blogger you can check her website out at naturallylindsay.com. And um, I would absolutely recommend her blog. That's actually how we met many years ago. Um, but she's super great and blogs a lot about fun things to do around the Pacific Northwest with kids and, you know, eating and self-care and all that kind of good stuff. So definitely check her out. You can also find her on Instagram at naturallylindsay. Yeah. So let's start the interview. All right. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the Flexitarian Feast. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to hear about you and about um, different, you know, tips and things you have about raising a vegan family and recipes, restaurants in Portland, all that kind of great stuff. So we can just kind of dive in. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how long you've been vegan and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I have been vegan for, let's see, oh, with like 13 years, vegetarian for over 20. Wow. Um, and my husband has been vegan, I want to say 15 years. Don't, don't quote me. That. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, and our kids have been their whole lives. Um, and so I have three kids. I have Edith, who's seven, Alder, who's five, and Ingrid, who is two. Um, and I'm a homeschooling mom. And I also blog occasionally. And I find the, <laughs> find the minutes to do that. <laughs> Yes, I love your blog. Um, That's actually how I found you. We were internet friends before real life friends. We were. And um, everybody should check out your blog at uh, naturallylindsay.com. We'll link that in the show notes also. So, Lindsay, what does a typical day of eating look like for you and your kids as a vegan? And what do they eat? And how does that work on a daily basis? Um, we usually start our day with kids begging for food as they do <laughs> as they do um, and so we usually start with the kids have like oatmeal or, and with peanut butter and blueberries or cereal um toast with earth balance kind of your standard kid breakfast uh-huh. foods um, you know and we'll jazz that up on the weekends with you know tofu scramble and hash browns mm-hmm. or pancakes things like that that we um yeah bring out on the weekends uh, and for my husband and I, like, I find that it's such a mix of what we have in the morning. Like, some days it's leftovers. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> some days it's exactly what the kids have. Some days it's, you know, toast. Like, we don't, I don't really have a standard go-to for breakfast. Um, you know, I don't really either. I really struggle with breakfast. I've said this before, but I don't even really eat breakfast, especially during the week. So... Yeah. Breakfast is a hard one for me. It's so hard. I have a hard time because the kids are up and they want to eat right away. And I don't like to eat breakfast for a little bit later, but then it's like, if I mix breakfast time, then I don't have, you know, it's like we get all out of whack. So I feel like I have to eat when they're eating. Anyways, it just throws me off. Yeah. Breakfast is a chaotic time. Yeah. (laughs) With kids. It's totally chaotic. (laughs) Um, and then, like, lunch, for my kids, it's usually snack plates. Mm-hmm. Usually at, like, 1030, they start to beg for snacks. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, I'm just, like, it's almost lunchtime, and I take note of what they want, and then they just get, like, snack plates with everything they've asked for in the last 15 minutes. Um, Perfect. <laughs> which is usually a lot. And then for myself, it's usually, like, uh, salad or leftovers. Mm-hmm. Um or I do Splendid Spoon, so I have that as well. Oh, yeah. Tell uh, us about Splendid Spoon. What is that? Yeah, what is that? Um, so Splendid Spoon is a food delivery service that I uh, started using just before uh, Ingrid was born. So mm-hmm. almost, I guess, almost three years ago now. Um, but it's soups and smoothies. And 
yeah, they get delivered and are they're they like really frozen good. when they're delivered? So they're frozen and then oh, nice. um, you can stick them right in your freezer or stick them in the fridge. And so I always have those on hand, which makes it so much easier. Oh, yeah. Like on a day when things are chaotic and I'm like, I need to eat something. Right. <laughs> and I don't want to cook anything else for myself. And I, you know, it's kind of like a nice thing to have when you don't want to eat your kids' scraps. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And then you make, then uh, you like feel like it's like a nice like treat for yourself too. Yeah, exactly. It's something I can do to take care of myself when like life is chaotic and mm-hmm. um, being home with three kids all day long. I basically feel like I feed people nonstop. Nonstop. So it's something I can do for me that doesn't involve any extra effort. That makes I sense. That. Good. I think that's so important. Um, yeah. I also struggle oh, with lunch. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I struggle with breakfast and lunch and snacks for myself. So, <laughs> but it is the same kind of thing where it's like, I'm, t- I'm like, you're, when you have little kids, you're just constantly like thinking about what they're going to eat, preparing it, cleaning it up. You know, it's like so much, so much time and effort put into feeding kids. Oh yeah. And then do you usually, oh, and then I remember I've seen on your Instagram that you do tea time. We try to do tea time like once or more a week. Um, so we do like tea and then we have like a baked good that we either make together or I'll, you know, put together while they're doing another activity. Um, I do a lot of like simple things. Like I actually do like the simple mills. My husband, my, oh, sorry, yeah. my son is gluten-free. And so, um, I haven't really committed myself to a lot of gluten-free baking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, I rely on like box mixes yeah. and things like that, but there's so many great ones out there right now that make life easier. Yeah. I love um, the simple mills ones. Yeah. So we do something like that. Um, or like the simple mills, like cookies or the muffins usually from them. Yeah. That's so cool. It was cool. Um, what are some of your favorite easy and quick dinners? Dinners. Um, we do spaghetti with vegan bolognese sauce. Oh, tell us about um, that. How do you make yes, it? Yes, please. <laughs> so I generally do like a base of like celery, carrot, and onion. Mm-hmm. And then um, depending on what we have, some days I'll do the Beyond meat like the ground round Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I'll do um lentils or I will do um TVP which is textured vegetable protein which is like a soy um product that kind of is basically like ground round yeah (laughs) oh wait 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 wait. we have to talk about TVP a little bit okay I have not dived very deep (laughs) into the uh fake meat world um is this like soy curls it's like soy curls. It is, but it's like basically like soy curls if they were pulverized. Oh, yeah, they're crumb. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they have the texture of um like like a mince meat. Like so like you would put yeah, it in meat. like okay. you know chili or um like pasta sauces. Um I haven't really branched out further than that, so I couldn't say what else. <laughs> yeah. I could think also prefer- if you're making them in like a sauce, you don't have to rehydrate them first right you just would throw them in and they you can just liquefy. put them in yeah oh and not liquefy but rehydrate rehydrate yeah yeah um so i do that and then i do like i sometimes will make my own sauce but usually i just grab I whatever mean, why make your own i feel like i like most of the time you don't um and then i add a big hunk of earth balance at the end of it yes that's like <laughs> nice the bolognese. yeah exactly yeah it helps um, so I do that, and then my gluten-free child, who doesn't like red sauce, mm-hmm. gets vegan mac, gets Amy's vegan gluten-free mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. that works. <laughs> that works. My kids don't like red yeah. sauce either. What? Oh, really? It's so with weird. That? I don't know. I don't know. My- <laughs> they like pizza. <laughs> I know that Alder doesn't like pizza with red sauce either. Oh, he only so has he it really with olive oil. Like <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't like tomatoes at all. Does he eat them in other ways? He eats tomato soup. Oh, oh my well, god! And he, and he will eat a pint. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, kids! He'll eat a pint of cherry tomatoes by himself. Like he absolutely like he loves tomatoes, but he won't eat like red sauce on pizza so or pasta. Funny. Does he it's like pesto? Up. Um, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> other things I do, I do like red lentil dal. Um, yeah. 
I do beans, greens, and grains is like a staple meal yeah. in our house. Yeah. Good. Um, black bean tacos. For the uh, beans, greens, and grains, do you have, um, do you put like a sauce on that or anything? Or I will any, make a, t- or do you buy any sauces that you would recommend? Um, I make tahini sauce, which yeah. I just do like tahini, lemon juice, um, a little bit of garlic granules, mm-hmm. um, salt and pepper, and then I'd use hot water to like yeah, fit it out that's a good idea um and i keep it pretty simple or i do like a cashew sauce which i do soaked cashews lemon juice salt and pepper garlic um sometimes i add nutritional yeast to that Ooh, um, that so sounds one of so those. good i could make that that does sound good yeah. super yeah. simple and then it can be used on like i use that with like pasta um like on tacos on bowls like it's pretty like versatile. And do. you could what like, do you call that? Just like cashew cream sauce? Yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah. It's basically like a vegan like crema, right? Like what like if you're putting on tacos, yeah. you could add lime. Yeah. Or, or you know, I don't know, different ways you could flavor it up too. With the- no, exactly. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying like you yeah, you can like definitely flavor it. You could add like cilantro and lime to it and it's you know like a you know cilantro lime cream sauce or you can add nutritional yeast which makes it more like a cheese sauce um so it's i feel like the nutritional yeast also makes it maybe makes it taste like uh yum sauce from cafe yum i think the only thing that would be different is add some like blanched almonds to it yeah almonds in it is that what's in it um i think yum sauce has like blanched almonds i can't remember gosh that Uh, sauce is so good i remember there was a blogger like a million years ago called peas and thank you or yes she you know what i'm talking a, about yeah, she's, <laughs> she actually lives in salem yeah and she made yeah. a yum sauce copycat this was like 10 years ago i'm gonna look it up and put it in the show notes her blog yeah, is gone 10 years she ago. shut it down but okay well i'm still gonna find the yum that sauce. recipe has to be floating around though you I'm know what sure recipe i'm talking about isn't that so funny yeah i think about this hilarious. recipe like once a month I'm like, where is it? (laughs) We have to like go. Is that the way back machine? Is that what that is? Oh, I'm going to find it. We need to go into like the dark internet to find this. (laughs) (laughs) I've never even had the cafe yum, but I know I'm like, I don't think so. No, I don't know. I I, well, I, there's one at Portland state. And when I was working, I would get that for lunch all the time. It's just a rice bowl with like, you know, nutritional yeast creamy sauce on it yeah kind of like the whole bowl isn't that kind of similar i think it's yeah i think it's basically the same thing yeah so um, well, speaking of yes. places local restaurants <laughs> in portland Lindsay, um i know not all of our listeners live in portland but i think a lot of them do so can you tell us some of your favorite places in portland to go either for like when it's just you and your husband or if it's the whole family you know enjoying the chaos of family dinner at a restaurant So I actually, like, I was thinking about this question and I was like, we don't really eat out that much anymore. (laughs) We don't either. (laughs) Um, Mostly because of Alder's gluten intolerance. Like, when you have a five-year-old and he's also vegan, (laughs) like, it's really hard to find pizza. So, (laughs) yeah, like, he he doesn't like so many things. And I'm like, well, what do we do now? Um, So for, like, as a family, we... do a lot of bakeries. So we do like mm. gem, mm-hmm. um, which if you haven't had the vegan quiche at gem, or I think it's like vegan tart or something. I've never that. been there. Oh my God. It's so good. Is it on, Is it that on place? Broadway? Um, maybe. I think I'll it's on the east side on, on Northeast Broadway, I think. Yeah. And we like love it. Um, and then like back to Eden. Love back for- to Eden baked goods oh, great uh, good breakfast um and then new cascadia mm-hmm. which is where we get like all our local vegan and gluten-free bread um and baked goods like that um and my kids love not in portland proper but um they love din tai fung which is is it Taiwanese restaurant? It's uh, at it's actually at the Washington Square Mall, and it oh. is like a dumpling restaurant, and it is so good. Wait, wait, are you telling me that there is a place with gluten free dumplings? No, oh, I'm telling you, there's a place <laughs> that has really good food. 
<laughs> nice try, Eliz. Darn it. <laughs> I know. The dumplings are not gluten free, but they have a bunch of they do have a bunch of gluten free options that my yeah. five year old will eat and it's like their number one requested. All right. Place I've to got go to check that place out. That sounds delicious. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Um but my husband and I, we do regular date nights. So we actually get out <laughs> get to go to fun restaurants. Um lately we've been loving Bar Diane. Oh, I've heard about this place. Which is in Northwest. Um and it is this like little like wine bar that's like kind of hidden away and but it has such great food um and great wine. Um I wanna go there. Yeah, it sounds great. And lots of gluten free options too. All right. Perfect. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh what else? Like we went to the new whiskey bar, the Scotch Lodge. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to try that place. That place was really great. Um, Do you find that it's pretty easy to eat out with vegan options in Portland? Oh, eating out in Portland is so easy Yeah, for being vegan. Like, um, there are tons and tons of vegan options at, like, everywhere that you can imagine. Yeah, not even specifically like, vegan places. I would say that we, majority of the time, don't eat at strictly vegan places. Uh-huh. We eat at more of just, like you know, popular spots that are, I basically go to Eater when it's date night and see what's like <laughs> yeah. the popular thing. What's hot. Yeah. And like a lot of them have like vegan options or can make something vegan. And I think that like, I think it's honestly usually better. <laughs> right. I better probably get some hate for that, but. <laughs> yeah. To go to like a not like a, a place that has all kinds of food. Over yeah, a vegan place. We're really spoiled here in that regard, I think. Just having so many options everywhere. Oh, we are like ridiculously spoiled. My husband worked in Seattle for like the last year he did. Um and it was just such a different thing really like, when we would go up there. Yeah, wow. I was surprised, but like there's lots of vegetarian options, but vegan options are very limited. That's interesting. That's surprising. Um, so I was like you know, we're just, yeah, we're kind of just spoiled here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Especially like vegan and gluten-free. There are a lot of great options. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I know. So you just did a big trip to Disney and I was following you on your Instagram and you were kind of, you know, saying what options, vegan options were like at Disney. Do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Sure. I actually have a highlight on my Instagram. So where can everybody find you? Let's, um, it's at naturally Lindsay on Instagram. So there's a highlight there that has basically everything that I at least took a picture of or video of for anybody who's looking for that for vegan and gluten-free options. Um, but it's incredible. Like there are so many and they rolled out in, I think just like the like October, like the first week of October, they rolled out like a whole new like plant-based um, like menu system that they do wow. and added a whole bunch more dishes and they're super, super accommodating. Um, basically just talk to the chef and they will have a gluten-free and or vegan option for you or any other like dietary um, need that you have. So not even specific to just gluten-free and vegan, whatever it is that you have, you're not going to have any problem finding it. Even if you go on and you look at, they have lots of menus and things like that out there. There's more options than what you see at fate, like on like menus. Um, we ate well. That's so cool. <laughs> that's surprising to me, but that's awesome. Yeah. We, we made a trip 10 years ago at Christmas time and they had a lot of options then. And, but now it's like, it's insane how many options there are and really good food. Like not just like, here's your, you know, yeah. vegan your pasta sad salad or either. your veggie burger. Yeah. Sad salad. There's like <laughs> really good food. That's, that's awesome. great. I think that's kind of a trend just nationally or maybe even, I don't know, worldwide that um, people are choosing more plant-based foods or, or people are finding out that they've got dietary restrictions. And so that's cool that such a big company is being accommodating, but also I imagine many of their, what do they call them? Guests or, you know, visitors are, have a lot of different kinds of needs. So that's cool. 
Did you guys see that at the Golden Globes, they served vegan food to everyone? I did see that. Yes, I saw it. Like, I was listening to NPR, and I didn't know, like, what was going, like, what they were talking about. And then I got home, and so I was like, oh, they're talking about the Golden Globes. <laughs> I came in, like, late in the conversation, and I was like, oh, my God, that's, that was really cool. Yeah, like, it's pretty cool. Definitely becoming a lot more popular, and that's great. I'm excited about it. So what are some, like, snack ideas? Do you have any, like, go-to snacks that you always have around? Um, we kind of have the standard, like, veggies and hummus, apples and peanut butter, mm-hmm. fruits, yeah. veggies, um, vegan cheese, olives. And my kids go crazy for, like, pistachios and cashews. Um, What's your favorite vegan cheese? Miyoko's. Okay. Writing that one down. <laughs> like any of Miyoko's are really good. The double chive is my absolute favorite. And the um the mozzarella is really good for pizza or like baked pasta dishes. Huh. Nice. Um and I've been meaning to try like, this. You like I, I was listening to your dairy episode <laughs> and the talk on and non dairy stuff and the cheese. Vegan cheeses are hard, and yeah. I am a picky, like, I'm super, right. super picky, but Miyoko's is different, because it's, like, a cashew, like, nut-based cheese that's, like, fermented, and oh. so it's, like, more of, like, having, like, a soft, spreadable cheese. I'm going to uh, buy so some. the chive, um, that chive one you're talking about is kind of, like, a cream cheese texture, or, like, it's a It's a little, f- little firmer than, like, cream cheese. Um, okay. So you could slice and put it on a cracker. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna get- Have you tried their butter? Their butter is really good. <laughs> I've been wanting to try that. I love the butter. Um, my kids are iffy about it. So we usually have Earth Balance and Miyoko's yeah. in the fridge. So I keep looking for it in the store and I haven't seen it like um, lately. Trader Joe's has it. Oh, okay. I'm going to go get some. <laughs> um, Trader Joe's. And actually, Target sells it, too. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Um, and they have the best prices on it. Cool. Just putting out there. <laughs> good to know. Hot tip. Hot budget tip. I love it. <laughs> yes. That's so good. Do you um, – you go to Costco a lot, too, right? Yes. What What do you get at Costco? Um, lately, we've been getting a lot of – like, there's, like, this cauliflower there that's, like, crunchy cauliflower. Kind of like kale chips. It's by, like, the what? same people who make kale chips. Yeah, and it's cauliflower, and it's so good. It's like a um, chip. It's like almost like freeze dried cauliflower, almost that type of oh, like that crunchy, and then it's like salty and crunchy, and kind of like a I don't know. It's like my chip replacement. Oh my it's gosh, Ela's Ada's and gonna love that. Ada will it's, love that. <laughs> my kids, my kids absolutely love it. I didn't uh, see that last time I went. I'm gonna have to look a little more closely. And then Simple Mills crackers, yeah. we always get, get the those. um the Kirkland like individual hummus. Yeah, those are great. Um, we love those. Uh, field roast you can get at Costco. I don't get it very often because we eat a lot of gluten free at our house, right? Because of it's easier, <laughs> right? Um, avocados, frozen berries. I know that. Some Costco's have it. Ours don't yet, but Beyond Burgers are coming. Oh, interesting. To Costco's, and um, when they do, I will be buying those. Yeah, I'm a big they fan have, of those, um, too. They have great kombucha deals at Costco sometimes. Oh, yeah. Too. Kombucha, coconut water. And coconut water, yeah. I yeah, always buy frozen mango at Costco, and yes. then I just serve it either frozen or defrosted to the kids. And it's so much better than, like, cutting a million mangoes for them. <laughs> Oh, which is like so much work to cut all those mangoes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I love the frozen fruit there too. I think those are like, yeah, those are the, the big things I think we get like on a regular basis. I'm getting really into Costco. So, this, this <laughs> I, may I might need to go Costco with you. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to go with you sometime soon and like stock up on some, some stuff. We should do a live podcast at Costco. <laughs> oh, God, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> Poor, poor do- tiki sound. I know. And would, yeah. Do an Insta. insta oh, yeah. yeah. We should do video. an Insta. IGTV. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a yeah. Thing. You should there figure it out in IGTV and do it. <laughs> it be funny. <laughs> People would be like, "Who are those girls? What are what they, are they doing?" <laughs> Costco oh influencer. Gosh. That's my goal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Lindsay, um, this is not totally, re- I guess you kind of touched on this already, but I've noticed that just in your writing and your, the things that you share on Instagram, you seem to have really great self-care practices. And I was, this is something I struggle with. And I think, I imagine a lot of our listeners also struggle with just as people who are trying to, you know, feed our families or take care of ourselves by cooking or anything like that. Do you have any advice or anything to share about self-care or how do you carve out the time for yourself? Oh, this is something that's like, it's a work in progress. Um, (laughs) It's been a lot of work and a lot of hard work. And it's been, um, I mean, I talk about this a lot. I talk about a lot of it on my Instagram when I I do a lot of like micro blogging about it. But like, I kind of hit rock bottom (laughs) with like anxiety. So it turned me into a point where I was like, I have to start taking care of myself more. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I have it carved out like on a weekly basis. We both have time, um, where we don't do bedtime, where we get to sit down and like have a break and just carving out that time, even during the day, like, especially when I'm with my kids all day long, I have to find moments when like they're, you know, distracted and I can take like 10 minutes to Mm -hmm. just like sit out. And for a long time, I held a lot of guilt with that, with like sitting out, like and doing nothing or doing something that I wanted to do when I could be like cleaning or doing, you know, like all these 500 tasks that are, you know, weighing on me. Um, so it's taken a lot to have to like not do that. And then also just, um, doing things for myself when it comes to like food, like, not eating my kids scraps, like in making myself a meal that is for me, like that is a way that I take care of myself and nourish myself in a way that I can then function as a better parent and partner and human. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of it's just like, it's having to kind of face that it's really important for us to make time for ourselves and, you know, having that conversation with yourself, having a conversation with your partner, um, with your family and setting up boundaries around that. Yeah. And then kind of help it, having them help you be accountable to yourself. Oh, exactly. Yes. Yeah. If I didn't have my husband to keep me accountable for like my nights that are my nights off. Right. And have him be like, Hey, all right. See you later. Like you have to go. Get out. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to sit here and not do anything. And he's like, nope, time to go. And I, like, I'm, you know, cursing him at that moment, being like, I just want to sit here. But as soon as I'm gone, I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much for, like, keeping me accountable. Because I did need to take a break. Yeah, everybody needs to take a break sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's so great. I think that's really important, too. And, um, I mean, part of, you know, for Michelle and I both, I think thinking about, you know, making – making sure you have a lunch for yourself or making sure you, you know, you went to the grocery store and you got the things you wanted. Like that's such a huge part. I mean, that's like a chore that you have to do, but trying to think of ways you can like make it more about something you want or making sure you're taking the time to like think about how you want to do things to take care of yourself. I think that's really important. Definitely. Exactly. I think that's great. I really am inspired by, and I'm also so inspired too about the way that you're so open um, with talking about anxiety and, um, I think it's really cool. I think people should definitely follow you on Instagram at naturally Lindsay, um, and do some, you know, some more of that. I know it's been hard to blog. I know it's hard to blog. This is why it I is. don't have a blog. <laughs> Blogging is so time consuming. <laughs> yeah. But I blog. do, I mean, Instagram, you know, there's like good and bad things about it, but I have loved watching and reading what you write on Instagram. I guess micro blogging is a really cool thing too. So well, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, well, do we have anything else to chat about? I don't um, I don't know. The only other question we had that maybe we maybe already went over this, but if you have any easy tips for someone that may be new to mm. dipping their toe into being vegan, uh, any easy ways to start that you could suggest? I think like becoming like or choosing to like eat more plant-based is I think part of it, you have to think about like why you're doing it and what that means to you, but also setting yourself up for success. Don't like, 
take on more than you can. Um, start with things that are simple and easy by just making swaps. Uh, I started out with like making those simple swaps of being like, okay, I'm going to have veggie burgers and veggie chicken nuggets and those things um, because they were easy. And it was a way to dive into that instead of making like crazy elaborate meals or holding myself to a point where like, I have to eat this way all the time. Right. That's something I tell people sometimes too, is like, give yourself a break. Like, it's not the end of the world if you didn't stick to this, you know, thing that you wanted to do. It didn't work out. Like, it's okay. You can always try again. You know, exactly. Like, it's just about, like, you know, do something as simple as meatless Mondays is, like, one right. great way to start. Or swapping out, um, like, your protein for, like, a dip for, like, a plant-based protein. Or just simply reducing the amount of animal-based products you have. Yeah. And increasing more plant based, but it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. I think that's the biggest thing. And and I know that like <laughs> coming as someone who is a vegan, like <laughs> that can come off as like strange. But I'm also like I'm a health coach too. Like that's what I did pre kids. And um, for me, I, I work with all kinds of different clients. So I'm like my personal choice and how I want to eat is not how everybody else wants to. So the biggest thing is just eating more plants. And there's scientific evidence that eating more plants is good for your body. And so doing that and focusing on that is more important than all or nothing. I think that's that's great. That's great. That's perfect. That's so good. (laughs) So good. You're totally right. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for chatting with us today. And thank you for having me. Well, that was super fun. I'm so glad we were able to talk with Lindsay. Yeah, it was really cool and fun to be able to interview someone. And we've never done that before. So maybe we'll do it again. Yeah, that would be super fun. Um, I had some thoughts that I thought I would talk about from the interview. I really liked hearing about how she is raising her kids vegan. I thought it was interesting. And just hearing what they eat regularly, it didn't sound that unusual to me. It's pretty much what normal people. I mean, not normal, not that they're not normal, but what, you know, most people with kids, like their snacks, their lunches, whatever, all of it seemed pretty reasonable and normal. And so I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't know what to expect, really. It seemed like raising your kids vegan would be kind of difficult in some ways, but she made it seem like it's just. Just how they do it. It's how they do it. Just how it goes. I know. I think it's so great, too. And, you know, the point of this podcast is examining, like, a flexitarian way of eating, which is just reducing animal intake. So just eating more plant-based foods. And so I feel like listening to her talk just gave me some ideas of simple things that I could even add in, even though we're not a vegan family, but we do eat vegan food. And so, um, yeah. And I also just loved her approach to veganism, just you know, encouraging people to try small steps and not just kind of go, you know, throw it all in and absolutely because that's not necessarily a that's not going to work for everybody and that's not you know a good way to make a change anyway. So I think that just small steps is a great way to do it. Yeah, I thought she did a good job of making that a point. Uh, I thought also the tea time thing she does with her kids is really super cute. cute. Yeah, I love she that. shares those on Instagram too. It's really her yeah, kids are really sweet. They are really cute. Um. I thought one of the dinner ideas that she mentioned that I really liked was her beans, greens, and grains, because that is something you could make a million different ways and whatever you have on hand, a good pantry meal, and um, just a lot of different ways you could work that into your meal plan. And that'd be an easy way to do like meatless Monday without really changing much of what you do. Just instead of having ground chicken, you just add in beans instead. Yeah. Yeah. Super easy. I mean, you could always have a can of beans. Yeah. And some rice. Oh, and you could even get freezer rice and frozen spinach and, you know. Definitely. Yeah, so that's I, a great. I really like that idea super that easy, she had. Not very expensive. Yeah. Really nutritious. Also, yeah. Really also, good. her um, self-care practices, just how she makes a point to take time for herself. I thought that was important and something that everyone could take something from. Yes, definitely. Um, everyone needs to take a break. Even if you just, like, go for a walk, go see a movie. We should go see a movie sometime. Yeah, we should. I love seeing movies. I know. I like, you're like my movie buddy. (laughs) (laughs) I'll pretty much go see any movie too. My husband's a little picky, so uh, I'm down. Yeah, let's go see a movie. Let's do it. Um, Anyway, so yeah, thanks again. Make sure you follow Lindsay Ingalls at Naturally Lindsay on Instagram or check out her blog at um, naturallylindsay.com. Yeah, and we'll definitely tag her in our posts 
if we, you know, when we post about this episode and on the show notes, we'll have links to her everywhere. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Now it's time for our recent feast segment where we each talk about a delicious meal we have made recently. Michelle, what do you have for us? Oh, my gosh. So I made the most delicious and the easiest way to make potatoes au gratin that I've ever made. Like normally, I feel like this recipe, whenever you try to make potatoes au gratin, it's like so delicious and indulgent, but it takes forever. Like you just you pour everything together and you bake it in the oven, you make it look all pretty and it just takes forever to cook. At least that's. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. So I came across this different method that I thought was genius and I've been telling people about it like since I made it. So basically what this recipe has you do is you slice up potatoes like normal. You don't have to peel them, but you can if you want. Um, use your mandolin really carefully. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared of mandolins. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pretty, I have sliced my finger with them, oh my gosh. but I'm, I've gotten pretty good and I always use the finger guard. Like when I watch the Bon Appetit videos. I know, they're never using the finger they guard. They're like slicing garlic with it. I'm like, oh, your hand. That anyway, freaks me out too. That's I don't so even, I just slice with a knife at that point. But anyway, so these potatoes, just slice them really thin. You put them all in a pot with a whole bunch of half and half, a little bit of salt, pepper, and nutmeg. Oh, and a little bit of garlic. And then you just let it simmer for a while. So just just enough for the potatoes to start getting a little bit soft and the potatoes start releasing their starches. And then um, you pour it all in a pan. You don't have to make it look pretty. And then you just top it with cheese and bake it. So it's like half the baking time and half is on the stove. So if like if you're making this for a holiday or you're making a bunch of other stuff in the oven, it frees up your oven for that time because it doesn't have to be in there for an hour. And it's you already know it's mostly cooked. So it doesn't take as long I don't know. I just liked it because it was a little more hands, not hands off, but a little bit less time in the oven. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you don't have to worry. It's like, are the potatoes done as much? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of stressful. And the end result too, they just tasted so good. It was like the perfect consistency. It, they that didn't really like good. bake into like one solid mass of potato. They still kind of had their separate slices. slices? Yeah. I don't know. So I just was really surprised at, at how much easier this seemed, even though it's basically the same it's just <laughs> you cook a little on the stove then you put it in the oven you don't even have to transfer it into a different pan if you do it in a dutch oven you could just keep it in your dutch oh, oven yeah and pop that in the oven so i just really liked it and you could easily add in other root vegetables or or something else other herbs but it was so good just as it is just like a little bit of garlic half and half salt and pepper that sounds delicious so what about you what did you make recently um well mine is not as delicious <laughs> I'm sure it was great. Mine's just like a really simple dinner that I made recently. Um, I had something else planned, but it didn't work out, which, as you know, sometimes when you have a meal plan, yeah. it's like everything falls apart or like, you know, the food you went went bad or I don't know, whatever. I don't even remember what happened. But basically, I did have sweet potatoes. So I cubed up a bunch of those and roasted them with olive oil and salt at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. And then on a separate sheet pan, I mixed shredded kale, which I... I have some friends who turned me into the shredded kale from New Seasons, um, which is a local market here in Portland, but it is so good. And somebody did the cost analysis and it's cheaper to buy the pre-shredded really? kale than it is to buy kale. And there's like no ribs in it. Are you serious? It's... and. Honestly, this is like a never ending bag of kale because I like get the bag of kale, I make a salad and it's like a, still a full bag yeah. somehow and well, it lasts really long. I've bought those at like Whole Foods and I think I bought it at Trader's and the ribs are in there and Too so many it's ribs. kind of a pain. No, no, no. The New Seasons one is like no ribs. Oh, that's awesome. Very few ribs. Very few ribs. Anyways, it's so good. And I've been making kale chips a lot. Nice. And it's just roasted kale or kale chips. And my kids, which my kids love that. Um. So I'm kind of like, well, if you'll eat kale that way, then I should make yeah. them as much as possible. So anyway, so the sweet potatoes were roasting and then I did roasted kale, which just same thing, olive oil and salt. That takes like eight minutes at 400 degrees to get crispy. And then I took a can of chickpeas and I drained and rinsed it and I sauteed it with salt and smoked paprika, oh. which kind of gives it like a bacony kind of taste. I use smoked paprika all the time. I haven't it's like really used it much. My um, secret ingredient. I feel like I'm going to start using it a lot more. <laughs> Um, anyways, and then I just kind of served it as a bowl with the roasted shredded kale Yummy. and the sweet potatoes and the chickpeas. Um, and the kids liked every part of it. And so it felt that very successful to me. So and it was good. just like warm. 
that's another really inexpensive meal too. So yeah, and you could also, if you wanted to be extra, you could make tahini sauce or I know I did need a sauce, but Ryan just basically covered it with hot sauce. So yeah, and it probably was plenty flavorful on its own. So that's the smoked awesome. paprika though. Oh, that's who like knew? The best. You knew? I didn't oh, know. I, I, I know it. now. I don't even buy regular paprika anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? Yeah, it's so it's really good. Yeah. So that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us at the Flexitarian Feast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you are listening. The next episode, we're going to be talking about slightly more fancy than everyday meals, so you won't want to miss it. You can find us online at theflexitarianfeast.com or on Instagram at theflexitarianfeast. A huge thank you to our producer, Tiki Sound. I'm Liz. And I'm Michelle. And we'll see you next time. Until then, eat lots of plants. <laughs>